So we finally got our potatoes dug. It wasn't a great harvest, but we are thankful for every last potato that we found. So we gathered all the tiny potatoes and all the ones that were cut from digging and we are going to can some potatoes. First, we have to clean and scrub them. So here's what we've made. We bought a new toilet brush and we attached it to the drill and we're gonna go see if this will scrub our potatoes. Well, just do the top layer once. You can always change clothes, I guess. I don't think it's working. I think we need less potatoes at a time. So we ended up moving inside to scrub the rest of the potatoes because we were just too cold being outside. The temperature has dropped drastically over the last couple of days and we definitely are not acclimated to it yet. We also discovered that the smaller bucket with a smaller amount of water and potatoes at a time worked better as there was less room for the potatoes to escape the brush. It only took us about 15 minutes to scrub this bowl full of potatoes. Potatoes and we don't want them real tiny. Um, that's kind of too tiny, so about this big. So we go... That one you can probably just cut one more time. Okay. What are we going to make with all these? We're going to can these. Oh. So now we're cutting the potatoes so that they're all approximately the same size. And I'm also removing any bad spots from them. So Harrison and I are cutting the potatoes while the rest of the kids fold the laundry. If there's a bad spot, you have to let me cut it off, okay? There's no bad spot. Katabina. Huh? Katabina. Yeah, let, put that one back and let mom do that one. So whenever I post photos or stories on Instagram of my boys using knives, I tend to get some negative feedback. But the truth is that these boys have been around knives their entire lives, and we've been training and coaching them how to handle knives respectfully since they've been two and three years old. And Harrison here has such a fascination with knives that I take every opportunity possible to coach him and train him on the proper using of knives. I Get your finger out of the way. Yeah, we're almost done. No, we have all of those. I know, but look how fast I'm going. Here, you put it in the wrong one. Oh, yeah. Okay, 
I'm going to give you some more. Give me those. Um, those are bad spots. Okay, you do those yet, and then you can go play. Okay. okay. So what happened here was Harrison's siblings got all done with their chores and went outside to play, and he was stuck cutting potatoes with mom. What we do in this case is I always ask them to give a little more time and energy than they think they're able to. So I gave him a pile of about six or eight more potatoes and said, okay, as soon as these are all done, then you may quit. This gave him a much shorter goal than the large bowl of potatoes that seemed endless to his six-year-old mind. Most times, um, my children will, once they get through the little pile of work that I've given them, to encourage them to develop some endurance in chores, they will switch over and um, take back responsibility to finish the entire job. And you can see here, this is exactly what happened with Harrison. He finished his six to eight potatoes that I gave him and then dug in and had the endurance to finish the rest of the potatoes with me. So now we are going to cover all of the potatoes with cold water. And what this does is it leaches some of the starch from the potatoes. And too much starch in the potatoes is what causes them to be soft and mushy in the jars. So we left the potatoes set in cold water overnight. I drained them once before I went to bed and let them and filled it back up with fresh water. So now it's the next morning and we are gonna dump them out and let them dry a bit. Okay, the kids are off to school and the potatoes are fairly dry. It's time to get them into jars because they are starting to turn color a little bit, just laying out here um, for the last hour. But I've got my clarified butter here and you don't have to use clarified butter. You can use just regular melted butter. I've got pepper that I'm gonna use and I'm also gonna use a little bit of salt. Now we make our butter pretty salty because that's the way we like it. So I really am not gonna use a lot of salt. I'm gonna put my potatoes in here and I'm gonna toss them with the butter and salt and pepper and then we're gonna fill the jars. I have a somewhat, somewhat of a love-hate relationship with canned potatoes. I hate to do them, I hate canning them and but I love having them on my shelf because they're so convenient. Now, I think the reason I hate canning them is I'm tired of canning by this time of year and it always happens, like I always can potatoes in the fall after we dig them. So what we did, you know, was use all the little ones and the ones that needed to be used first. And I think every year doing them at this time of year just kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth because I'm tired of canning. I want to be done. I want to move on to other projects, more fun projects like sewing or decorating for the holidays. Um, however, I'm never ever sad that I did potatoes because they're so convenient. So we're just going to get this over with and we're going to do them because future me will thank present me for taking the time to can potatoes today.
I'm just gonna wipe the rims of my jars and I'm using this beautiful all-natural cotton dish rag that a friend gave me and I'm gonna link her store because I think you'll really like it this dish rag is like an all-natural cotton just like grandma used to use and I'm using it dry um, to get any butter off of the rim so I just feel like dry is gonna clean that grease better than wet would and now I'm gonna add my lids and we're not gonna put any liquid in these jars this is dry canning So when you're pressure canning, you want to only put about, put enough water in so that it covers the bottom one inch of the jar. Because you're not canning with water, you're canning with pressure. And pressure means you're canning with a much higher temperature. Um, water boils at 212 degrees, so when we water bath can, we're just heating our product enough so that when it cools it creates a vacuum and it seals um, the lid and then there's an absence of oxygen in the jar when we're pressure canning we're doing all of that but we're also heating the product at a much higher temperature so pressure with pressure canning you're going to have a lot hotter of a temperature and that hot temperature is what kills any botulism spores so that is why we're pressure canning the potatoes because they're low acid and they'd be a perfect environment for botulism to grow in that lack of oxygen but if we heat it enough with the pressure canner um, we can kill those botulism spores so 40 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure have passed and it's now time to open up the pressure canner and remove the jars of potatoes. So the boys are down here with me in our cold storage and we are going to get all the things that we need to make some vegetable soup. 
vegetable beef soup. Harrison, don't play with the cold air return. Okay, first we need a quart of potatoes. No. And we need some green beans. Ken Kendrick, can you get the green beans? Green beans? Careful with the jars. And then we need we need some um, tomato juice. Tomato juice? This it has to be real runny. runny. Yep, I think that's tomato juice. Harrison, let mom. <laughs> Actually, mm. yep, that's tomato juice. Yep. Okay. And then we need, we need some beef. Beef yeah. stew. Vegetable beef, beef stew. stew. Oh, that's venison. I didn't want venison. <sighs> Oh, beef is the, I, think, I bet you're right. I bet the beef is up here. Well, can I just move this in? All right. Do we have everything we need? Yeah. Beef and beans, tomato juice, and potatoes. Why is so much? Hey, Harrison, you can grab some pears for our dessert. <gasps> pears. No, those, that's peaches. Yummy, yummy huh? pears. Right here. Yummy, yummy. Pow, 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 pow. There you go now. So this is another way we use our canned veggies and our canned meat. We have church tonight, so this is a very easy meal. So we're gonna put the beef in. I've got one jar of very hot tap water and I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna rinse out every jar to get every last bit of flavor out of the jars Teaspoon of salt, maybe a little more. I'm gonna add some black pepper, and then once it's warm, we're gonna taste it and adjust our seasonings as we need. Um, a lot of people can soups, like they might put all of this together and can it, but I would need four or five quarts of that anyway to feed my family. So that's why I can everything separately and then I just dump it all together and then I've got a big pot, a big family size pot of soup. So we know that Elvin's on his way home from work, so I'm just gonna fill the younger boys' plates with soup so that it can cool off a while since we don't have a lot of time to eat supper before church tonight.
So the potatoes that we did not can, we had left in the garage to cure. And now that they are cured and dry, we are going to store them in the cold room of our basement. So the racks that we are storing our potatoes on are vintage bakery racks that were a gift to us from friends at church that used to own a bakery. As the boys brought their buckets down and I dumped the potatoes onto the racks, I sorted through them again, sorting out any that had bad spots or that were too small and I will work those in to my canning schedule next week sometime.